Hi, my name is Aoife and I work for Inclusion Europe, an organisation fighting for the equal rights and full inclusion of people with intellectual disabilities and their families in all aspects of society. This short video documents the perspectives and the opinions of the people who work at School Nicholas Nefa, a school working to be truly inclusive of children with intellectual disabilities. This is the school that my younger sister Roisin goes to. School Nicholas Nefa in County Wicklow, Ireland is an amazing example of how schools can work to, be, to integrate children of all different needs. The questions in these interviews centre around Roisin and her education and I really hope you enjoy hearing how the principal, the teachers, the assistants and the parents all work together to make sure each child reaches their full potential and according to that child's needs. No, I'm only in the position for the last a couple of years, so I suppose the inclusive policy was in place in the school when I came. But I've been in the school for longer than I care to remember, for 20, 27 years. So I've seen huge changes and I've seen it progressing, but it wasn't as inclusive as it is now. Now saying that, I'm, I'm teaching 20 years and I can just, I see the change over time mm -hmm. anyway, you know, so there wouldn't have been as much inclusivity. I would say 20 years ago when I started teaching, 2000. I would have had children definitely looking back, children that needed more specialist help than I was able to give them. And there was less tolerance as a result from the children and from the parents of other children because it slowed things down or there was behaviour issues. And I suppose you had nowhere to go, you were just left to manage. Okay, so a special education teacher, I spend most of my day in Solace. Solace is the name that we have for our special education class. I take each child individually for what we call teacher time. And this means I spend about 40 to 45 minutes on a one-to-one -one with each of the six children in my class. I liaise with the mainstream class teacher and depending on the child's ability, I work on similar academic areas to the mainstream class. I also work in, on areas that are not covered in mainstream education. So most of the children in Solace would have OT plans, speech and language plans and behavioural plans. We also do lots of social activities in Solace. This includes playground visits, library visits, social trips to the local shop and outings to play centres and school tours. So as a special education teacher, I would organise these trips for the children. My role as a special needs assistant is to assist the student or students with their care needs and their additional needs in order for them to access and attend school and participate in education. I qualified as a teacher in 1992 and I received very little training in the area of special ed. I would have visited a couple of special schools in Dublin and we would have had a couple of lectures on special ed and that was the extent of my training. Now I do engage in continuous training which is hugely beneficial as you meet other teachers who are doing the same job as you and I think they're generally the best people to learn from. It's usually done through uh, just meeting on a regular basis, whether, whether it be outside the staff room or having a quick chat in the staff room together or then going up and down to each other's room. But we, we both know that we can approach each other at any time. Now, Kira would inform me of what she's doing in Zolus with Roisin and how we can kind of transfer some of the workload which would be managed with Roisin to do within a classroom setting and doctor it accordingly so that she would be able to do it independently. Communication is a massive part of everything that goes on in Solace for all the children. The main work with the mainstream teacher is to ensure that the child is experiencing a positive social interaction in the class. So the children learn turn taking, raising your hand, friendship building, listening to the teachers and many other skills. So if you're working with a child with disability in your room and you're taking the time to care for that child, even if it's five minutes, other children doing something else, the other children you are modelling, patience, understanding, and the, taking the time to get to know, that is what you're trying to teach all the children to do mm -hmm. as well. So it's not a waste of time. You're not taking up any more time. And now, okay, behaviour can be tricky if it's, if it's a difficult behaviour, but if you're calm, and if, the, if you're always modelling the best practice, if possible, but you're always trying to show the children through modelling your best behaviour, best practice, how to handle a situation like that, that is education. Because 
as they get older, they may find themselves in a situation where they may go into teaching, they may go into a workplace where there is somebody of that nature. The reality is you have to be in the situation to figure out how to handle it. And a lot of the time you might get it wrong, but the thing is you'll never get it so wrong that you, you just reflect on it the next time. And if it happens again, you go a different route, you try something, another layer, something else, different words, you eventually get there. So if the children are observing that all the time, I think that's actually a really good role model. I am extremely confident in the education they're giving. They meet Roisin where she's at. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I had her, what we call his individual education plan there a few weeks, about six, eight weeks ago. And, you know, as regards, say, mathematics, she's way behind where she should be with her peers. But to be realistic, me and our teacher have agreed that we will just teach her life skill maths as opposed to maths that you know her peers would be learning in mainstream school how to count money and to focus on that area stuff instead of trying to work through the standardized curriculum it just makes more sense that's an example they look on learning you know the holistic you know if her sensory needs aren't met or if she's having a bad day she's not going to achieve anything academically so they understand that they have to look at things holistically. It really started for us before we looked at having special classes or anything within the school setting when we had a, a boy that enrolled with Down syndrome and it was a huge benefit not just to the to the boy himself but to the school in general because we saw the benefit for other children for the teachers and for SNAs and the impact that he had on everybody in the school setting and we found that with his integration into the classes as he progressed up through the school everybody benefited we found the children were more empathetic we found that he I suppose followed what his peers were doing as well and he learned from them and they learned from him and we've we've continued I suppose with body systems coming from that, which work extremely well, where the children, body, children have various different needs, but we also have reverse integration. So if we had children coming from our special classes into the mainstream and integrating there, we would also reintegrate children from the mainstream into the special classes. So it works, it works both ways and it's, it's very beneficial to everybody. I would say it is win-win, definitely, for all kids. I always say to them, they are so lucky to have the opportunity, the experience, up close and personal to get to know somebody with autism. It's just, uh, you know, I didn't have it as a child and I had to learn. It just has become natural to a lot of them. There's no reaction, no drama. They just, there's an acceptance, there's an empathy, there is an understanding of autism. There's an understanding that every child with autism is different. I would see them treat, you know, they know how to communicate, they know how to wait. The impact is, I think it's phenomenal. It has impacted Roisin's home life hugely, like she's so much calmer when she has the routine of school, going in and out of school. I know that if there's any problems in school, the teacher and the special needs assistants will contact me, but not in a confrontational way, as in what are you going to do about your child's behaviour or whatever challenge that they have. It's like, how can we work together to help Roisin? So that gives me huge peace of mind that we're working collaboratively to help Roisin reach her best potential. So we give her all the tools and she is so clever in taking all this information in. Sometimes we might need a social story to get over hurdles, but that's okay, that's very easily done too. Inclusive education means to me that education is built around the child. It's also not kind of ticking a box, oh, we do inclusive education. It has to be real. And I feel that's very much apparent in Russian school. There's a, a great picture of three children standing, looking at a blackboard. One is just standing on the floor. One is standing on a little box and one is standing on a bigger box but they're all the same height on top. 
So to me, that's what it is. So it, depending on what the child needs to get to the same level as the other children is the support that we would give them. Inclusive education for me means a two-way street as well. It has as many benefits for the mainstream child as it has for the child with additional needs. And I just feel you've been accepted for who you are and the level of academic and social intelligence you have is all part of that inclusivity. And this involves a strong team approach, incorporating children, parents, teachers, SNAs, external agencies. Regardless of the activity that they are welcome all day, every day, if they wish. And they're also welcome to depart if they wish. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, I suppose it's kind of like a freedom to be wholly part of and to be wanted and needed and valued all day long. That's it, and to be happy. A happy child is number one.